Hi, I am Shorty Biscuit and welcome back to my channel. I have here the EcoFlow alternator charger. I have wanted one of these since it was released because it's supposed to be really great for road trips, especially when I'm on the road, I can charge my Delta II power station and it went on sale. So I ordered one. I'm going to take it out and hook it up to the battery and see if it works. And then I'm going to figure out how to thread it through from the battery to the engine into the back of the trunk here. This box is 14 pounds. I expected it to be a lot lighter, but once I get in there, I'll see what is actually taking up all that weight. Okay, inside the box, there are two individual boxes. This box has the alternator charger. And this box has the cable, so the input cable, the XT150 output cable, and the fuse cable are all in the second box. Inside the box, we have the XT150 cable. This is the fuse. And this is the cable that's going to run from the battery in the engine all the way to the back and plug in to the alternator charger. It's a pretty thick cable. Um, I think it's six gauge wire, but it's a pretty thick wire. So if you notice that this black cable is longer than the red cable, this is because the fuse is going to be connected between this red cable and the battery here. So we have the cable that connects the alternator charger on this end to the Delta II on this end, the fuse, and the input cable that is pretty heavy. There is another box inside this box. And inside this box, you'd find the plate. This is to uh, attach it to the vehicle the cable puller and this is what helps pull out the cords when they're connected to the alternator charger and some screws i will not be using this setup because as of now i don't know where i am going to be putting the alternator charger in the back here i am likely going to be moving it depending on if my seats are up or if my seats are flat or if I have the fridge or other things in the back here. So I am probably just gonna leave it in the back and let it be wherever I can move it to. And the alternator charger has the manual. And the actual charger. So the charger itself is not too heavy. The weight really was in the cables. So I am going to hook it up to the engine. I am not going to feed the wires through today. I did find the spot where I can feed that through. Underneath my steering wheel, there is a rubber grommet that other wires are coming into. This is a second generation 2011 Honda Pilot. And if you have a Honda Pilot, I will try to show you where it is, but it's really up underneath the steering wheel uh, behind the brakes. And there is a grommet there that I'm going to be using to push the cable through. I've already tested it to see if something can get through there and I was able to get some a piece of plastic through there. So hopefully it's big enough for this six gauge wire and it comes out right under the, I'd say the arm for the windshield wiper. So it, there's no way you can see it. At least I couldn't see that hole from the engine side. But once you push something through from inside, you can see it poke out there. And I should be able to route it there to the battery and into the car. But for today, I'm just going to hook it up directly to the battery in the front. I'm not going to run the wires today. And I will record that when I do and add it into this video. Here is a close-up view of the alternator charger. This here is the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module. This is where I'd be plugging in the cable that connects to the battery in the car. It has a clear picture of a vehicle on it. This is the port where the XT150 cable will connect and then connect to the power station. Over here is a COM port. I will not be using that port. However, on the side of the port, 
you'd see there is the power button to turn the unit on and off. So I am going to plug it in and get it connected and see how it works to charge the Delta II. So this line already has my alarm system connected to it for power. So that's what I'm going to be using to connect this EcoFlow cable. Okay, the wires are connected, so I'm going to connect. This is the cable that comes from the car. I am going to connect that right into the port that says alt in. So even on the cable, it has that clear symbol that tells you this is the one that connects to the one that says car. All right, I heard it click in there. All right, the cable is plugged in and so hopefully it's getting power and I can turn it on. And immediately the screen popped up for alternate charger on the phone. So I'm going to add the device to the phone. So it is 100% getting power, so I did something right. Okay, so on the cable itself, you would see it says battery and EcoFlow. So this one is going to go right in here into the charger and it clips into place. And this gets plugged into where it says extra battery on the Delta II. I heard a click. It's not getting any input yet as I would expect. There is a red light on, on the front of the alternator charger so you know it's definitely powered on. All right, I am um, you know what, I don't know if that would work. So I was gonna use the remote start, but I will just start the engine with the key. Hello. All right, the engine is on and I am already getting an input from the alternator charger. That didn't take long at all. I'm up to 305 watts of input and climbing very, very fast. I am pretty happy with it. It is connected to the phone. The phone is seeing both the alternator charger and the power station. It is getting charged. It is all working as expected. You're probably hearing the engine noise behind me because this will not work unless the engine is on. So it is working. The power input is dropping and that's to be expected because the Delta is at 88% and it does not take full power through the whole charging cycle. The closer it gets to 100, the less input it pulls and it is dropping, but this is working. There's a nice green light on the front of the alternator charger. It is pulling in power. And it is matching now because I see 580 on the phone screen and I see 580 here on the Delta. So next weekend for my road trip, this is how I will be getting some power if the sun does not cooperate. Okay, I am under the steering wheel and this here is the brake pedal. And you see this yellow plastic here? Well, I have it feeding through that rubber grommet on this side so it's right now pushed through the rubber grommet and that is where i'm going to be putting the six gauge wire from the alternator charger the input wire and on the next side i'm going to show you where that comes out okay now you can see this is the engine the battery cable is right here and so this is the right side of the engine and this is behind the steering wheel. See the yellow tube is coming out from there. That's where the alternator wire is gonna come out and then route around to the battery, which is under there. In order to run the cable from under the steering wheel into the engine, 
I'm going to have to remove the fuse. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bind the two wires together so that they don't get separated and cover this tip here so that when I push it through, they both go through together and they don't get hooked on anything. battery cable is connected you can see it there it is running along behind the air horn and coming out through the engine currently the grounding cable is on the body you may move that but I'm about to start it up I already ran it along here and it's zip tied right here it's gonna go through here but it won't go any further than the second row because when I have the second row flat I will put the Delta 2 right here on the floor so it doesn't need to go all the way back there I am going to turn it on and there we have input it is working for this week long trip for Overland Expo East I am very, very thankful that I had the alternator charger installed. There was rain Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and half of Thursday. So there was no option to charge up all my things via solar. I have the solar panels. I've used the solar panels, but I didn't get to use them until Thursday afternoon. So I'm going to show you the setup with the alternator charger. And so the alternator charger is here. It's just sitting on top of the Delta II and it's plugged in to the XT150 port on the side there of the Delta II and it stays here powered. The EcoFlow River 2 Pro has been sitting on top of it right here. And so, and you can see in the back there, I have the EcoFlow Glacier fridge. The fridge is connected with the DC port on the other side of the Delta II and it also has the internal battery in there so what I've been doing is either using the, the turning on my car starting the car and using the alternator charger to charge up the Delta II which is keeping the battery charged on the glacier I've also used solar panels same thing plug the solar panels into the Delta II and get it fully charged when there has been sun over the weekend and using the same solar panel to charge the River 2 Pro. So this has been my setup for the week and everything has stayed powered as long as I paid attention to what the percentages are. Uh, the first two days, it was pretty cool and rainy outside and I got almost 45 hours out of the EcoFlow internal battery. And the battery is rated for 40 hours. So I was pretty surprised when it went over the 40 hours. Uh, I have the fridge set at 40 degrees and it stayed at level 39 basically in the app for the whole time. And yeah, I didn't have to go in, open it much. I wasn't making ice or anything else on eco mode. And it did indeed last the 40 hours, which I was very impressed by. So this is the setup for this trip and the combination works exceedingly well. If you don't have the alternator charger and you have any of the compatible products, I suggest you get the alternator charger. Even on my drive down here, everything was full by the time I got here and stayed full the entire time because the alternator charger was keeping the Delta II powered, which was keeping the fridge powered. Get yourself an alternator charger.